Hi Jasmine, I'm Leslie. Welcome to Agave Farms Garden. Um, I'm going to show you where some fruits are that you can use for your pastries today. Alright, sounds good. Alright, we'll go this way. Okay, so for first, for the first ingredient that Jasmine would like to use in the pastry uh, will be lavender. So she is now pruning some fresh lavender. She's going to be using some of the foliage and the flower to add some flavor. The flower petals are very uh, gentle and they'll break down easily when cooked. So you can throw those right in. The green leaves, however, need to be dried um, just briefly. A day or two in the hot sun will be perfect. And then you're just gonna crumble that up and use it in the recipe. All right, so this is our orchard. Uh, the first tree that we have here is going to be Dorset Golden Apple Trees. And then here we have a Florida Home Pear. And beyond the trees here in front of us is going to be the peach trees. We have a couple different types of peaches over there and I'll show you when we get over there. Alright. So the apple trees, um, the Dorset Goldens are usually harvested when they are still pretty small. You're just looking for ones that have a nice yellow color. And you're going to want to pull them right off of the stems so here, okay? So here's one here that you can pull. So these are going to be early amber and then we also have desert gold peach um, and as you can see we have so many fruits on the trees that they have made our branches um, start to bend downwards so it's definitely time to harvest <laughs> um, just keep in mind they are going to be a little firm so these also will soften as you cook them down um, the more peachy color that they have on the outside of the skin is going to show you when they're ready to be harvested in comparison to the ones that are still yellow they need a little more time on the tree yeah, and so don't let the small size fool you on the peaches. Um, here in Arizona where it gets really hot, they do tend to ripen a lot faster. Um, so they will be nice and sweet and juicy uh, no matter what the size is. Okay, and this is the desert gold peach tree. Uh, these ones are gonna be a tad bit larger than the early ambers and they have a slightly different flavor, but very, very, very good, nice and juicy and perfect for a pastry. So you're gonna do the same thing. Just grab the ones that look a little more peachy than yellow. I also wanted to show you that these are freestone peaches, meaning that when, once you cut them open, the stone, which is the pit of the peach, comes right out without having to damage the flesh of the peach. So it's perfect for cooking, also for eating um, raw. Yeah. So freestone means the pit comes right out. So this is going to be French lavender here, used to spice the fruits that we have. This is a pear, Florida home pear. This is going to be the early amber peach. Then we have desert gold peaches. We have some Dorset Golden Apples here in the back. Thanks so much for stopping by today. It's really been a pleasure showing you around. I can't wait to see what you make with the ingredients that you pulled today. Um, and I just wanted to add also that uh, there's many benefits in using freshly picked produce uh, for the pastries um, in comparison to buying something from the store. They're going to have tons more nutrients. Um, organic produce obviously doesn't have any GMOs, so it's better for your body. And they taste better. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leslie, for showing me around the farm today. Um, I'm super excited to make something with all the apples and the pears and the peaches that we got. Um, this kind of reminds me of a time when I was younger and I got to spend time with my grandparents and we would pick a bunch of strawberries and eat them for days. Uh, so just brings back a lot of nostalgia nostalgia and warm feelings and I'm going to be making a summer medley fruit crisp so hopefully you'll get to try it. Awesome. <laughs>it's me Jasmine um, you just saw us we picked all our fruit over at Agave Farms and now we are here at the kitchen so I am the creator of Sue's pastries and we are all about incorporating Arizona and Sonoran flavors so I use a lot of like prickly pear mesquite corn throughout my pastries um, so this is kind of perfect because this is, you know, local grown fruit that is grown right here in the middle of Phoenix and we're just going to be using that to incorporate within our dessert. Um, we're using pears, apples, and peaches um, and then we're also using some fresh um, French lavender that we have which is kind of desert lavender though. So yeah, we're gonna be dicing that up, um, cooking it down with some sugar. I'm gonna add some Arizona honey into there, um, season it a little bit with some cinnamon, some salt, 
and then we're gonna make a streusel, cover that, cover what we cooked down and bake it for a little bit and voila, y'all be all done. And if you like, you can always add like a scoop of ice cream with it or you could even just, I feel like it's appropriate to eat for breakfast, minus the ice cream. So let's start by dicing up our fruit. The easiest way um, for me when I'm cutting an apple is just cutting around the core. So I got the center of the core right here. Just get rid of that sucker. I'm gonna do my pears similar. And this way, if you're putting the flat um, surface down, you have less concern of your knife slipping. Easier to hang on to. So yeah, you can use a bunch of different fruits for this. It doesn't have to be um, necessarily what I'm using. So if you're cutting a peach like this, it's probably okay to use a smaller knife but I just cut along the side, twisted it, and then I'll just be able to pop out the pit. We'll come back and dice that up. Yeah, and these are really pretty with the red in there. This would be really awesome on top of a cake. Bake it open, have them just lying up like that. So the biggest thing when you're dicing up your fruit like this um, is trying to get everything consistent so things cook at the same rate. So the peaches are a little bit softer than the apples and the pears. So I'm gonna actually cut the apples and pears a little bit smaller so that they, that way they cook at the same rate as the peaches. And this guy's a little bit bigger than the past ones we just cut. So that way, you can't really tell the difference. I mean, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> and then I'm just taking out these little ugly bits, just cause it's a sign of a bug in there. But the rest of the fruit's still good to go. All right, so that is your step one, cleaning out your fruit, dicing it up. Okay, so we just um, finished the first step, cut up our beautiful fruit here. You can see all the different colors and different shades of green, which is really pretty. Um, so next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this down. So right here, I have some butter, cinnamon, sugar, brown sugar, um, some honey, and then a little bit of cornstarch, which um, I'll see how liquidy it gets if I need to actually add this. So. I'm gonna cook down the butter a little bit. I'm gonna brown it actually, which to me is like the best thing that can be in any food, anything, dessert, um, savory, whatever it is. If you're putting butter into it, you should brown it first because it makes it delicious. Um, so I'm gonna brown the butter a little bit. It's just gonna get like a nice golden brown, which adds like almost a caramely flavor to it. And then I'm going to add my apples and my pears and peaches some sugar, we're gonna cook that down a little bit just so it softens, takes away a little bit of the tartness and the bite from all the fruit. And we'll also be adding some honey in there, finish it up with some seasoning, and then we're gonna portion it out into our little pans, and then we'll move on to the next step. Let's head on over to the stove and start browning our butter and cooking down our fruits. So you can kind of see how it's starting to get this light tinge of brownness to it. Um, you can see that the, some of the particles down here are stuck on the bottom of the pan and this is the color that we're looking for. So it's definitely like a light brown um, and that's where you want it at. Okay, so once your butter's been browned, uh, I'm gonna add my honey to it and this is all, like these steps right here are all just a way to develop flavor. So browning the butter, um, cooking this honey a little bit, right away you can start to smell the sweetness and this is a blossom honey, orange blossom honey. 
So you can kind of get a little bit of hint of that and it starts to get this nice little foam going on. But then we're gonna add our fruit. So now we're gonna add our fruit in here and then we're gonna just make sure that this gets evenly coated. And once we have that going, we're gonna add some of our sugar to help bring out a little bit more of the natural juices in here. So I'm not adding too much sugar just because the honey already has some sweetness and you don't wanna completely make all, make the tartness from the fruit disappear just cause you don't want it to be a flat noted dessert. So I probably did maybe like a quarter a cup of sugar total. And now we're gonna turn down our heat and we're just gonna let that simmer a little bit. And that's probably gonna go for about five to seven minutes. What you're looking for in your end, um, the end of this step right here is you want it to be a little bit softer and there should be some extra juices coming out of here. Um, but it's basically just to help develop a little bit more flavor and to soften the fruit just a little bit. Okay, so we're two minutes into our five to seven minute cooking period. I'm just gonna add a few pinches of cinnamon in here. So I just pulled out a little, um, dice of apple to try. I just want to see where the sweetness level is at and also just make sure that it's not getting overcooked or anything. It's really hot. Oh, it's hot. It still has like a nice bite to it, um, but it is a little bit softer in texture, which is this is exactly where I want it at. So I'm gonna pull this off. So I poured my hot mixture into a cold bowl and now we're gonna move on to our next step, which is our streusel. I have a few different things that I'm gonna put into my streusel, but you can keep it super simple. The main thing is, is you're gonna want seven ounces of a flour and then seven ounces of either graham cracker or some other type of mixture. I got some brown sugar, some regular granulated sugar. We got some flour, oats, Ooh. graham cracker crumbs, and then we have some roughly chopped pecans that I'm throwing in there. And you don't have to use nuts in here if you don't want to. I just really like it because it's gonna give another type of texture. And then we'll also be adding half a pound of butter. And you wanna make sure your butter's cold. That way it gets evenly distributed into all the dry without it um, creaming too much, like if you were making cookies. So I'm just gonna give that a quick chop and then throw that in there. And if you don't have a mixer like this, you could always even work this by hand or using a fork or a pastry blender if you have one of those. All right. Basically what this is doing is um, slowly cutting away at the cold butter to even distribute it throughout the dry mixture. And that's what's gonna give us our crunchy streusel. And yeah, sometimes you gotta be careful. This stuff will kinda go a little crazy. Oh, and then I'm also gonna add some cinnamon in here. Cause you can't get enough cinnamon. And we're also gonna do like a teaspoon of vanilla. This is a lavender. It's um, starting to dry a little bit. It feels pretty dry to the touch. Lavender is um, super strong in aroma and flavor, so we definitely won't need a lot of this. And you also have to remember that you'll be baking this, which is gonna release a lot of the aroma as well. So I'm just um, chopping this up a little bit. 
And then I'm just gonna throw this into my streusel mixture. And I might even use a little bit as a garnish just because the color's so pretty. So I'm just adding, I have about a good tablespoon here. And we're just gonna let that distribute. Maybe I'll add a little bit more. Okay, so we got our streusel mixture all done here. And I can kind of show you what we're looking for. We don't have any huge chunks of butter left in here, but, and it's not like a dough, so it hasn't completely blended together. And we'll just be putting that on top. Okay, we got our fruit mixture over here. And I'm gonna be using these cute little tart tins to put everything in, but you could definitely put this in like a big pie tin or you could even put it in like a casserole dish. So there's not really a wrong way to bake this. The idea is that you just wanna bake it to get the streusel crunch on there. So I'm gonna just put these out. I am gonna spray this. There's a lot of sugar in there, so you don't want this all to stick. And just got a little dandy scoop. Put that on there. And now we're gonna go ahead and generously apply some streusel on here. And this'll give it a nice crunch. So you'll get the sweetness from the fruit and then some crunchiness from the streusel. And then if you like, you can always do that scoop of ice cream on there. You can even do like some Greek yogurt with it if you do decide to have this for breakfast. And just because I love salt, I am gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on here. Salt always opens up the taste buds a little bit. Once we have everything layered in our tins, we can throw this into the oven and we're gonna bake that at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so you're really just gonna be looking for like a light golden brown on the streusel and then you'll be all set to go. So super easy. Um, like I said, you could always switch out the fruit. There's a lot of room for interpretation on this. Um, but yeah, have some fun with it. Woo! Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw these guys in the oven and wait for them to finish and then hopefully we'll get to eat them. All right, so this guy was in the oven for 10 minutes at 350. As you can see, the streusel has a light brown tinge to it or color to it and had a little bit of juice overflow, but that's okay because that means it's all caramelized inside, which is awesome. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna garnish this with a little bit of lavender, some powdered sugar, like I said, if you wanted to add a scoop of ice cream, some yogurt with it, even like some caramel sauce or yeah, anything like that, then that would definitely take it up a notch. But if not, this will be good too. All right, so here we have our end product. You can see the crunchiness of the streusel. There's some pecans sticking out. You can even see some of our fresh farm picked fruit and of course our beautiful lavender and then you have the contrast of the powdered sugar on there which really brings out all the different um, shades of brown in there and just deliciousness, deliciousness in a little tart pan. <laughs> All right, so uh, that is the end of our summer fruit crisp with our fruit that we got from Agave Farms in the middle of Phoenix. And I was super excited to do this. I am thankful to Urban Farming Education and Agave Farms for letting me be a part of this. And like I said, this is something that's super flexible. You can change out the fruit, you can add, take away from the streusel. So it's really something that you can be expressive with and use it to any time of the season. 
Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go take one of these over to Leslie and I'm gonna eat one myself. <laughs> Hey, I'm back. I just wanted to bring you some of my creation that I made with your awesome fruit here at Agave Farms. So I made a little crisp that includes the wow. apples, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Um, apples, pears, and then um, some of the peaches. And then we just made like a little streusel on top. We got some napkins. This looks amazing, thank you so much. Thank you, I hope you like it. First you gotta try it. People are always like, oh, it looks great. And then it's like, <laughs> try it first. <laughs> but yeah, so the streusel just has like pecans, um, there's some graham cracker crumbs in there, oats, and then I put some of the lavender inside the streusel. Okay. Try to keep it light on the lavender because it tends to be like super overpowering. I don't want it to be like a perfume bottle type deal. Exactly. Or soap. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's some honey in there, cinnamon. Okay. There's a little bit of sugar. So yeah, All hopefully right. you like it. Well, thank you so much. I'm yeah, so happy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's good. Um, I think you could totally get away with eating it for breakfast, kind of like a parfait, mm -hmm. like deconstruct it a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's super, super good. <laughs> Thank it you. tastes like um, it tastes almost like there's cinnamon, maybe or a little. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's yeah, really, really good. Yeah, definitely cinnamon in there. It's really, really good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Wow, what a treat this is. Yeah, of course. I see all the fruits from the trees in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very delicious and sweet. And I was actually expecting it to be a little more tart. So yeah. I'm surprised with the sweetness. It's, 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 it's incredible. <laughs> Good, I'm happy you like it. I mean, it's hard, like I think, um, like I didn't want all of the tartness to disappear, so hopefully there's still like a little bit of balance. It's not like overly sweet, but um, yeah, we did have to like infuse the fruit with some of the like honey flavor and cinnamon and stuff, so that's where like cooking it down really like infuses and injects all the flavor into mm -hmm. there. Yeah, no, I can still taste the, the flavor of the fruit, so the sweetness doesn't overpower it at all. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I can still taste the fruit, yeah. <laughs> it's a perfect amount. Good. It's very good. Nature's deliciousness. Yeah. There's a big peach right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the peaches were so pretty. Like, when you cut them all open, you can see, like, all the red on the inside. And even, like, when we cut it all up and had it in the bowl, it's, like, all the different shades of green from the apple and the pear and then with the peaches like speckled in there. It's like, oh, it's so pretty, oh, it looks so good. I thought it was beautiful, yeah. yeah. And the really stones nice. were easy to fall out mm -hmm. while you Yeah, the yeah, good. it totally came out super good. easy, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I uh, wanted to mention to you, maybe next time when, we, um, when you come out, we can harvest the peaches when they're much riper and that will add um, a sweeter flavor for you so you won't have to add as much sugar because yeah. the riper the peaches are, the more juice they have, which contains a natural sugar. So that might be beneficial for you not to have to add any more added ingredients. Yeah, that would be awesome. And just to keep the natural flavor of all the peaches and yeah. Yeah, and they're they're um, close to being super ready now on the tree. Last week they were still a bit firm. Now they're, you can kind of tell week to week how fast they're ripening just by Yay. the touch of them. Yeah. That's exciting. And yeah. then you probably, I mean, I feel like especially in the summer, like maybe you could even do like a cold version where you're not cooking the fruit down so much so it's like you know so it has like that fresh and lightness to mm -hmm. it especially in the summer because it's so hot but yeah exactly that'd be nice anything cold and refreshing on a hot day mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah some of the things we like to make with um, the peaches are like peach cobbler and things like that my daughter likes to make it it's kind of similar to this honestly yeah yeah it's got the crumble on the top mm -hmm. Just like but it's crustless hot. pie. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm never in the mood to make it on yeah. a hot day. <laughs> Don't want to turn on yeah. the oven, I know. It's yeah. like uh -huh. <laughs> the worst. This weekend we're going to be making some zucchini bread from the zucchini that we harvest from the garden. So that's always exciting. Nice. She, yeah, we get these giant zucchinis out of the garden day after day and you get sick of <laughs> the same old zucchini yeah. chopped up. So we try to get creative with different ways to make it and her favorite is the bread. <laughs> nice. You can even like turn that into muffins and stuff too. Yeah, Super exactly. Easy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Jasmine for coming again and allowing me to try this delicious pastry. I really appreciate it and I would love to know where um, I could go 
or send people to try other of your pastries. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me and letting me um, on the grounds and using some of the awesome fruit here. Um, you can find any of my pastries on SeussPastries.com. That's spelled S-U-S-S-P-A-S-T-R-I-E-S. -S -S so yeah, thanks again. Awesome. <laughs> Please like and subscribe our, to our YouTube channel for more fun and cool stuff like this.